Ladies and gentlemen, TLC goes off the air as the final pay-per-view of the year ends with live murder. Uh, WWE Tables, Ladders, and Chairs 2020 took place at the WWE Thunderdome at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida, the home of the Tampa Bay Rays. And it was a good event tonight. It was a really good event. I'm going to break down the card as we kicked off first with a TLC match as Drew McIntyre defended against AJ Styles. Um, it was a good match. During the match, The Miz came out and cashed in his Money in the Bank briefcase that he won from Otis at Hell in a Cell to make a triple threat match, but it, Drew McIntyre being the babyface that he was overcame the odds and retained. <laughs> I'm just glad that the briefcases this year, like this year 2020 was, you could arguably say, one of the worst year for the Money in the Bank briefcases. The men's briefcase being won by Otis and the women's briefcase being won by Asuka to then turn into a title because Becky was pregnant. Like, I'm not mad at the women's side of it. I understand the situation, but the men's side was so horrible. It just... It was not good. And I'm sorry. For all the people that was like, Miz won! Miz is great! Like, Miz is great. But Miz's character before the briefcase was a joke. He was a joke while he had it, and he'll be a joke after it. He was a comedy character. You know, if you're going to complain that Otis is a comedy character, but not do the same with The Miz, you're a little bit biased there, but it's a little bit too late to start complaining about this as I'm wearing my new Chase Elliott NASCAR Cup Series Championship t-shirt uh, that I got for my birthday today, ironically. Um, following that, we had a SmackDown Women's Tile match as Sasha Banks successfully defended her tile against the untouchable Carmella. Um... Look, I know some people are a little bit upset that Carmella had this new character, this new gimmick, and she's already losing, but I can't help but feel like she couldn't beat Sasha, like Sasha just finally got over the hump and is having a good reign. Um, you know, it was too early to make her lose, and Carmella, I think, was a little bit too early to have her win already with this new character. Um, you know, Carmella could still look good even with the loss, as I expect that she will be built back up. But I think Sasha's going to move on to someone else on SmackDown. I don't know who for the Royal Rumble. It'll be interesting to see who she gets. Especially considering that, you know, with the Rumble coming up in uh, on January 31st. It's definitely going to leave not many options for WWE to select to see who will be her next contender. Uh, but that was a really good match as well. I'm really interested to see where this Carmella character goes. This whole new untouchable character. I would have followed that up by the Raw Women's, uh, the Raw Women's, the Raw Tag Team title as the Hurt Business officially dethroned the New Day for the new Tag Team titles. The New Day had been champions since uh, the draft <laughs> as they switched belts with the Street Profits. Uh, I'm a fan of Hurt Business. I enjoyed Hurt Business having Shelton, Cedric, Lashley, and MVP. And I'm really curious to see where this goes, because now they have all the mid-card titles under their, their grasp. Uh, they're going to try to go for the WWE title next. Um, you know, is MVP just going to be a manager? Is he going to want some gold for, him, for himself? You know, and the match was really good, and I have nothing bad to say. The finish was interesting with Cedric tagging himself in when it looked like Shelton had it, but that will maybe be explored whenever the Hurt Business ends up losing the tag titles. We didn't follow that up with um, the tag team title match as uh, the women's tag team title match as Shayna and Nia, Nia were defending the titles against Asuka and her mystery partner, which was the return of the queen, Charlotte Flair. And it's good to see Charlotte back. And it's about time. It's a little bit weird that she come back to be tag team champions with Asuka. You know... It is what it is, I guess. You know, it would be kind of stupid to have her come back and lose right away. Um, I just hope Shane and I can move on and do something else. And I don't know what the fuck's going to happen with those tag titles. I have a feeling Charlotte's going to turn on Asuka at some point. Like, Charlotte's going to turn on Asuka. They're going to lose the belts like, the Riot Squad or something. Which I won't complain. Or team down in NXT. And uh, I think Charlotte versus Asuka is going to be the big plan heading into... I've been hearing rumors from WrestleMania, which uh, would be interesting. We'll see if Asuka could get her win back from WrestleMania 34. Uh, we then followed that up, of course, with the um, the uh, co-main event. The Universal title was on the line as 
Uh, Roman Reigns defending against Kevin Owens is a great in a TLC match. This was hands down the match of the night. An amazing match. Great storytelling from Roman and Kevin Owens. Um, I have to be honest. I think uh, Roman as a heel has done a very great job. And he's had good baby faces to work with. Jay did a good job. Drew for Survivor Series now KO. I hope there's a rematch down the line. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what's the plan for Roman. If the plan is still Dwayne uh, to come back and face Roman at WrestleMania. Or maybe someone from the inside. We'll see. If they do KO versus Roman again, I would absolutely love it. Because their match time was awesome in a TLC match. So I can't wait to see what they would be able to do in a regular one-on-one -on -one match. And then your main event of the evening, the Firefly Inferno match. Bray Wyatt the Fiend against Randy Orton. So, this wasn't a regular Inferno match where they had fire on the apron. This was, they had fire at ringside. Like, they had, like, these things that just light, lit up fire. And they had, like, these poles on fire. And Bray and Orton went against each other. And the match had a lot of back and forth. It was, it was a good match. It wasn't too amazing. Uh, the ending came when Bray had a Randy mandible claw. But Randy basically turned and shoved Bray into the flames. Bray was on fire. Bray ran to the ring, got RKO'd, and Orton decided to end TLC by pouring gasoline on Bray and lighting him on fire, thus burning the man alive. Well, not the man. It, it obviously looked like it was some sort of like figure or sort of dummy in the in the in the, in the, in the Fiend's clothes. So and we know the Fiend is a character that can come back from being burned alive. So I'm not worried for for his future. But Orton got the win. So Randy Orton pose, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. So TLC 2020 was good. It was a good way to end 2020. Hopefully 2021 will be a luckier and a better year for us all in terms of wrestling, in terms of being able to attend wrestling shows and stuff. Because it would be fun if I would have been able to go to TLC 2020 on my birthday. I think originally it was supposed to be in, I think somewhere in Ohio. So take that for what you will. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a very good night. Have yourselves a good holiday. And we'll see y'all later right here on the Raffle Duke channel.